Let's take a look at the triplanar nodes inside of Copernicus so that we don't have to rely on UVs for placing our textures. So as always, this project file is going to be available on Patreon, but let's drop down a cop net here. Let's dive inside and we're going to take a look at the triplanar nodes. So there's three different triplanar nodes, the triplanar, the triplanar UV, and the triplanar hex tile. We're going to be looking at the triplanar node. If you dive inside, it actually has this triplanar UV inside of it. But this is how you're going to be applying your triplanar projections to your meshes. So in order for this to work, we need to use a position and a world normal. So we can get that with a bake setup. So if I take this, I'm going to get rid of the cage and I'm going to take this SOP import here. I'm going to uncheck that use external SOP. I'm going to dive inside and drop down a rubber toy. And I'm just going to uncheck that shader. And then I'm going to subdivide this just to give us a high poly mesh as well. Drop down a null and we'll just call this out high poly. I'm going to set our display flag on this rubber toy and then I'm going to copy this null so that I can just paste that path into the SOP path for our high poly. You can see that we get our high poly there and because our display flag is set on the low poly, we're going to have that in here. So now that we have that set, we get our big geometry textures to work and we get everything that we need for this triplanar node. So we need to come in here and enable our world normal and our position. And then we can just take those and wire those into our triplanar. And it's going to already start to work for you. So we need to provide it with a texture. So we have a few different inputs here. We have this texture and then we have X, Y, and Z texture. So if I look at our interface here, we have this texture source. So we can either use a uniform texture, which is going to be this texture right here, that texture input, and it will use that for all three projection axes. If not, we can use this texture per axis and then we can specify what we want on each individual axis. So let's come in here, we're going to set that back to uniform texture, and I'm just going to drop down a fractal noise uh, to use as an example here. So let's crank up our, or our amplitude and our center, as well as maybe our contrast just a bit. And let's do the element size as well. So let's wire this into our texture. And then I'm going to drop down a preview material, and we're going to take our low poly, and wire that into our geo here. And then our triplanar, we're going to wire into a mono to our GP. And we'll wire that into our base color as well. And if I look here now and press Shift W to get rid of our wireframe, we have this triplanar projection that's working. But you see, we still have our seams, which you have to have UVs on your geometry to have this bake geometry textures to work. It has to have UVs on your low poly geometry. So we're going to have these seams that we need to take care of. And a really easy way to do that is just to use an extrapolate boundaries node. And this will work in most cases. Now it's going to require this fill area, which all we need to do is take our alpha from our bake textures and wire that into our fill area. And it's going to just clean that up a little bit for us. You see, we still have our seams a little bit. So let's come in here and just crank that up a little bit. And you can see that they kind of disappear now. So we can come back to our triplanar. And you can see that we have our triplanar projection actually happening. And if I come in here, we can mess with the triplanar blending. If I just lower that down to zero, you can see where our seams are actually going to be at on our geometry. So where the projection is taking place. I can up this to get a smoother result and really crank that up to get a nice smooth result. I can scale our texture. So this is an overall scale for all of our textures, as well as if you have this to set to texture per axis, this is going to affect this on an overall scale as well for that. As well as this rotate, same thing here. We can do our rotate there on a and offset for a um, overall 
offset and rotation. Now let's go ahead and set this to texture per axis. And I'm going to take this fractal noise and I'm going to wire that into our X texture. You can see that that's going to apply over here. And from the, this is a projection from the positive X direction. And then we can drop down some other noises. So we can use like this bubble noise for one of our other inputs. I'll wire that into the Y. You can see that's coming down from the positive Y. And then we can use like a phaser noise. Both the bubble noise and the phaser noise are new to 21. And I can take this and wire this into our Z texture. And I think that this, there's, so there's this phaser wave. Let's just look at this actually real quick. So we have a rectangle, a saw, or a sine wave for this phaser wave. We also have a phaser noise give us some different results here. So some cool kind of stuff here. We have a Gabor noise, and then we also have this intensity field, which I think looks really, really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and just use that one, I guess. You can play around with all those different settings. Uh, I'm still playing around with everything as well. Um, let's come back to our preview material, and you can see what we're getting here on our mesh. So we can actually refine these a little bit further. So we have these per axis controls. So let's say I don't want, I don't like the scale. I want to you know, increase it more. I can do that from here. I can rotate it from here as well as offset it. We also have this little icon right here, which allows us to click on our mesh and set the offset based off of where we click. There's also on some other nodes, uh, like an eye trapper that'll allow you to click on your mesh and select from that as well. So keep an eye out for those. Those are new to Houdini 21 as well. Um, we can do the same thing for our every axis here. So we have the ability to, to really dial in everything as far as this triplanar blending goes. And then if I twirl this down, we can mess around with the way that these are blending as well. So we can really just kind of dial in, you know, every aspect of this projection. So really cool stuff coming here um, from the triplanar. You do still have to worry about seams a little bit, but uh, this really starts to bring us uh, just like a little bit closer to having, you know, everything that we need for, uh, texturing. Now, the only thing that we're really missing at this point, I feel like, is a really solid implementation of um, painting, texture painting on our geometry. We can do this a little bit with um, like the texture mask uh, paint stop, I believe is what it's called. And then we can bring that into Copernicus and, you know, we can, can we can paint on our mesh that way and then start to blend things based off of that. Um, but it's not the greatest implementation, but I'm sure that the side effects is working towards uh, a better solution for that. I would imagine that that's something that's going to happen. Um, can't guarantee that for sure. But this brings us a little bit closer to something like Substance Painter. So with like Substance Painter, you have the triplanar projections uh, that you can do for your layers onto your mesh. And then you can like paint out where you want those textures to be applied. So, you know, everything's starting to come together with Houdini 21. And I think that's really uh, a really strong point of Houdini 21 is all these different systems starting to work together like this um, Baker working with this triplanar node, working with this extrapolate boundaries and stuff that we've had in 20.5 to really, you know, start to build out a full tool set for us to, to really use. So lots of cool stuff in Houdini 21. Like I said at the start, if you want to grab this file, it'll be available on Patreon. So you can grab it there if you would like. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new stuff um, on Houdini 21. I'm going to be covering a whole bunch of the new features that are released. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that, make sure that you stay tuned. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.